know, this is a beautiful city. I don't want to see this city to go down into, in, into the tubes, right? I mean, this is serious. Thank you. The next speaker. Somebody gave him a red or something. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. My name is um, Minnie Kathy Hempstead, and I'm president of the Los Angeles NAACP. Uh, I'm here to speak regarding his own force killing, some call it murder. I'm wondering. He's uh, all uh, lived in South Los Angeles. After he was killed, I went over to, to look, to speak with the neighbors and the people who were just milling all over the street. And I was told that he never bothered anyone, that he walked and he held his pants up because they were too big and he didn't have a belt. And that the policemen who patrolled the area knew him. Mm -hmm. And I was told that the two officers who killed him, knew him. Mm -hmm. So this one lady said, I've been watching him walk around here for two or three years. And if you talk to him, he doesn't answer. He'll only ask for a cigarette or a light. And I think the thing about that that just bothered me so much was <coughs> if he did not bother anyone, if he was not in the process of committing any kind of crime, at all. And the policemen, I, I don't think, I've never heard until this day, have never said why they stopped him. Mm -hmm. And if you have a mental condition, mm -hmm. then the officers come after you or anyone come after you. I'm not sure what your re uh, reaction would be. But if you are a policeman, and your job is to protect and serve, and we pay you well, our policemen look really sharp. I've traveled all over the world. Our policemen are the sharpest policemen because we spend a lot of money taking care of them. But we don't like the way you treat us. And Thank you. Just one question. Yeah. Uh, when, when, when he was killed, let him speak. Go ahead, go ahead. We're listening. Say it. We can hear you. Can I have another minute? Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mayor Paul. You know, I'm a, my name is Kathleen Wells, and I host the Kathleen Wells Show, which is heard on KCA and the Progressive Voices Network. And I've had that show for four years. I was sitting in the overflow room, and when I came in here, I was shocked to see that they're all mostly white men on a commission <laughs> assessing analyzing, judging the black community. That, that's a problem right there. So, I mean, that's the problem. When we elected Barack Obama, the media said, oh, we're in post-racial America. There's no such thing. And see, the media stinks and the system stinks. And you guys are part of the system. You're cogs in a wheel. We're the people, we're the community. And you are not addressing, you cannot judge our community. Because you have your point of view is skewed. You have mortgages to pay. You know, you're only concerned about your self-interest. You put your group first and our group. You know, one of the women came up and said that this is occupied territory. I'm sure most of you are pro-Israel. Because we're just like the Palestinians yeah. in America. Yeah. You see, and most of us identify with Palestinians. And so what I'm going to do on my radio show, initially my show, The Kathleen Wells Show, and, and in fact you can see it on YouTube, it's on KCAA Radio, I've been there for 40 years, and I'm also on the Progressive Voices Network. I'm going to now focus on police brutality in the black community. All of you. My show will focus on Afghanistan and the Iraq War and the economy and Israel and Palestine. But now I'm focusing solely on police brutality in the black community. Because you guys, there's one black man here. 
She she has no voice. She's just um she's just a you know sort of like she's a token. She has no power whatsoever. It's all that's no I haven't said it. Because what I say is important. Because no one you know the black community has been voiceless for too long. Black people need their voices told. We need to tell our own stories. We need to express our own point of view. We don't need white people to tell us what we're thinking, what we're feeling. We need to speak for ourselves. And that's why on my radio show, I want black people to come on my show and tell their stories. You're going to recess the meeting yeah. again? Yeah. But I, you know, but why are you shaking your head? You're black. Because hey. I am black. And because everybody is afforded two minutes. Where do you think? And we gave you two minutes. We He's falling asleep. He's falling asleep. No, no. What a fucking baby, Steve Sabah. for is the respect to be afforded to everyone who wants to speak for two minutes. At, just a moment. At the conclusion of everyone who has signed a comment card speaking for two minutes, we will then recess into a closed session as defined by law, and then we will begin to deliberate on this case. We still the longer, the longer you it is now. delayed, the longer it will take for us to deliberate and give a decision. So please, please, please respect that. I will respect that. All right, that, so, just so then before, I will respect that. Before, before the commissioners file, no, before the commissioners file out again, because the meeting is not going along to our, the, lead, the law, if we leave again, the police will then ask those who have been disrupted to leave. The room will be cleared and we'll start again. So please, just take the two minutes afforded. We will listen to you. There's no comment we can make to respond to you by law. We're just okay. listening. Okay. So you had your two minutes. Please step away from the mic and please let's let the next speaker come forward. No, you cannot. Come on, come on, You cannot. Can you keep the commissioner woke? Yeah, like you have to follow the rules. Please, You don't have to stay away. Yeah. Can you please get Steve? Please lower off back in. We don't need Steve. You have four. We don't need him. Let's go. Let's just continue. Let's continue. All right. Go, Mom, Paula. All right. Come on, Paula. Come on, Paula. Come on, Paula. I am going to ask one more time. I don't actually want to. I'm going to ask one more time. We actually, at the conclusion of this session, will begin to deliberate this case, which is what you all are wanting yes. us to do. Yes. Please let us hear your comments for two minutes each, and then we will go and deliberate this case, and we will come back downstairs and share with you our decision. That is, so right now, it's going on noon. This will probably continue us hearing public comments maybe till about 2 o'clock. We got time. At which, we got time. At which, at yeah, which point yeah, we will deliberate and then come back. But I want you to understand that the more disruptions we have, the longer this will take. Thank you. I'm sorry. Would you please? So I'll, I'll, I'll end the recess saying that I'd like to hear from each of the public speakers who would like to speak. Oh, not the people that feel that they're determined to do whatever they want to do. Thank you. Excuse me, time. I just lost a couple minutes. That's fine. Uh, seconds. Excuse me. My name is Gwendolyn Scott. I'm from Northern California, Sacramento. So far, we haven't had any murders by the police officers. But since I've been down here in L.A. for 11 years, and Officer Joseph has been on the force of Skid Row for 17 years, I'm an undergrad social worker from Sac State University. This goes to the city attorney bed and the rest of the committee. To all of you here, all this outrage, I understand. I feel what you feel. Because I've been going through a lot of outrage things myself with my family in Sacramento and in the whole state of California. Therefore, I haven't 
protested, but I have protested with you guys. For the murder of Ize Ford and the other black lady that was punched in her stomach when she gave up her kids to the 77 precinct, there was no reason for them to go and get a police warrant for her arrest. They already knew she was on drugs. You know majority of the people that are down here on Skid Row and around this area on drugs are either there or mentally ill. Therefore, there's a lot of money that has been invested into the police department. We need to get more police equipped and educated to mentally ill people right. like my son who's incarcerated right now because of crack cocaine that I did not bring in this country. Mm -hmm. I, hey, you need to be a boss and everything. You need to stop for me for the drug. It's not a war on drugs. That's a lie. I have observed it, I have been out here, and I have investigated and investigated and investigated, and I'm fed up with it. 44 years ago, I watched a black man, Danny Lozano, in Gulfport, Mississippi, get sabotaged, genocide, by the police, and I'll be damned if I want to continue seeing this going on in America. Yeah. It must be stopped. Yeah. Thank you. Thank My name is Dr. Molly Talcott. I'm a professor at Cal State uh, University, Los Angeles. You know, most of my students, 95%, are students of color. They routinely discuss being followed by the police, being harassed, being profiled, being locked up for no reason. And um, I'm here, you know, I could put on my doctor of sociology hat and talk about 500 years of, of the oppression of black people, indigenous people. Um, the ways in which cops were the original slave catchers, the ways in which this is a system of Jim Crow, a new system. It looks a little different because a lot of the faces of color and power preside over it, um, but this is a system of white supremacy. I could do that. Um, I could try to appeal to your moral conscience, and I'm really you know, thinking about the words of Brother Tunde earlier, and I'm really trying to think about how you all sleep at night. Right? If we fast forward to hit in the future, right? We think about where were all these folks in power when the system changed? Because the system is gonna change. I really want to lift up all these beautiful people in this multiracial human rights movement led yeah. by black people. Led by black people who say, as Brother Quasi said, we intend to create a society with full human rights for all people regardless of race, or gender, or sexuality, etc. We have, and why is it in 2015, black people's hashtag is stop killing us. Stop killing us, right? We need to create a society where police are not here to manage inequality, because that's what's happening. Lock them up, deport them, arrest them, harass them, make them so demoralized that they won't fight back. Oh no, all these people out here, we're the future. My students know it. All these community members know it. We're going to create a new society with or without you. So that's the first thing. Yeah. Our Christian Torres, Megan E, Ejeleva Aborn, Elena Taylor Hamler, and Aza Spivey. Welcome. Um, I'm here today. Last Sunday, my preacher said, Where you go? And otherwise, God is telling me to come to you and tell you, American, where you go. Where you go. You cannot go all over the world protecting people, presenting yourself with that identity. When terrorism is right here mm -hmm. in the backyard. Mm -hmm. That's right. As a matter of fact, can I have that picture? Yeah. <coughs> it's a matter of color. Mm -hmm. That's all. You are children of God. And I'm speaking to you as a prophet of God. I'm not a spy, like many have accused me. I'm not in politics. Like many have accused me. If you go to your system, you check up on Odile Davis. That's who I am. I work on the footsteps of my ancestor. 
It didn't come overnight. Before I was born, till after I was born. All the police officers are not bad people. All human beings are not bad people. But check yourself. Many of those police officers do this thing to keep your child.